Head coach Jason Beverlin got off the 2014 MEAC Baseball Championships on the right foot with a 4-0 shutout in Maryland Eastern Shore. You know, how did you feel like the guys opened the tournament this year? Uh, you know, anytime you come away with a win that first game, it's big. Uh, you know, we, we got really put ourselves in a, in a bad position last year by losing the first game. So, you know, anytime you get a W that first game, uh, continue to stay in the winner's bracket. You know, that's where you want to be. The next game's big. It'll give us a day off on Friday and, and set us up for the rest of the uh, tournament. But um, I thought they did a great job coming out and uh, taking care of business. With the shutout and the pitching and defense was obviously good. Offense maybe not where you wanted it to be despite 10 hits. They were just kind of spread around. What can the offense do better or what should the offense have done better today? Uh, you know, I, I just think it, it's maybe a little more consistent line drive type approach, hard ground ball, line drive type approach. Um, you know, the teams in our league do a really good job uh, with their outfield defense and, um, you know, can track down a, a lot of the well-hit balls that we hit up in the air to the outfield. So, um, you know, just making them make plays with uh, hard hit ground balls and, you know, and see what happens. Now, obviously a centerpiece to today's story is Montana Durapo at a career high 14 strikeouts, the most Ks in a MEAC tournament game since 08. He was just dealing out there. What do you, what did you, uh, was this the opening round of performance that you expected from him? Yeah, believe it or not, uh, early on, he definitely didn't have his best stuff, um, even though he was getting, you know, a lot of strikeouts. Um, as the game wore on, he, he definitely settled in and started commanding his fastball a lot better, and all his pitches for that matter. He was a little up in the zone early. Uh, you know, the fact that he can command more than one pitch and throw more than one pitch in the strike zone definitely helped them, still put them in... Uh, in pitchers counts, um, but I, you know, I felt like really the last two or three innings he pitched, he, he was at his best and, and throwing more like he does. But you know, that being said, good pitchers find a way to get out when they don't have their best stuff, and that's what Montana did early in the game. You know, he wasn't going to be denied, and, and he was definitely going to find a way, regardless of how good he felt his stuff was early in the game. Now, he, I know that he doesn't really keep track in his head of his pitches, but you know, would he, do you think he was a little surprised that you wanted to go ahead and take him out when he did? Because he always feels good, even when he's getting over that century mark. No, I mean, had the score stayed 2 nothing, we might have we might have stuck with him. Um, you know, getting those two runs late, I think, was big because it gave us the opportunity to, to get someone else in and... Uh, you know, if when and if we get to the championship game, now he'll be uh, a little more ready than he would have been had he had to pitch the ninth inning. So um, it was big. You know, our offense came through uh, late, and uh, you know, to most people, we had a two nothing lead anyway. So what? What's two more runs? But those were big runs, and. Uh, you know, it, it, like I said, it gave us the opportunity to get him out, and he'll have three days and, and get ready for the championship round. Now, with the way that the Wildcats won, do you think like this is, that that style of winning, the getting the shutout, playing good defense, getting enough runs and big plays, you think that that's something that can provide some good momentum going into the game with Norfolk State? No, definitely. Uh, you know, like I told him on the bus after the game, it's. It doesn't matter if we win one nothing or ten to nine in a tournament. It's just win, you know. You, uh, play to or live to play another day, and um, you know it really doesn't matter who gets it done or how how we get it done as a team, as long as we get it done. And you know they did. So, you know I think they feel good about the win. Hopefully, they'll look at it objectively and, and clean up some of the areas that we could have done a better job, but. Um, you know, you're always happy with a win. Montana Durapo, 
opened up the uh, MEAC tournament with a 4-0 shutout against Maryland Eastern Shore. Just about that, how are you feeling you know, today to get the tournament started? Uh, I was really excited. Um, you know, this is the time of the year that everybody waits for, and you know, it's finally here, so you know, just trying to embrace it. Uh, definitely looks like you came prepared and locked in. You had a career-high 14 strikeouts. You were just dealing out there. How were, what, were the, what was on your mind, and what were you, you seeing when you were out there on the mound? Um, you know, I, uh, the strike zone was uh, you know, expanded outside, so we were trying to exploit that a little bit. Um, I was just trying to hit my spots. Coach Beverly calls a good game, and uh, you know, I just trust the judgment. Well, numerically, one might say yes. Would that be one of your better pitching performances in your career? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, uh, my command was a little uh, iffy in the beginning, but um, you know, I made, I found ways to get people out. Um, came back, you know, later in the game, and you know, I just you know, continued to dominate. Now, what part of your command was it working? Was it your fastball that just wasn't there at the beginning? Yeah, it was. Uh, my front side was leaking a little bit in the beginning, and my fastball was, you know, I was leaving it up. Same, all my pitches were just leaving it up, and I just had to work on staying back. Now, obviously, in the Wildcats' pursuit of a title. We're probably going to be looking for you to come back feeling good after today's performance, ready to go on short rest if you need to. Oh, yeah, I could pitch tomorrow if I needed to. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to pitch Sunday. Jordan Robinson, we got you in your first NEAC tournament. Big offensive contribution. Now, talk about, you know, how you felt out there as, you know, an offensive spark at times for the Wildcats. I felt good. I felt confident. Just trying to do whatever I can to help their team. Bring the title back to Daytona Beach. Now, although the Wildcats had the shutout lead, that uh, triple in the eighth was huge. Did you realize that you were going to cover that kind of ground when the ball came off the bat? Um, I felt like I hit it pretty good, but I didn't think it was going to get to the wall. And when I saw it to the wall, I just kept running. Now, when you got back to the dugout, what was the response that your teammates treated you with when you got back? They were excited and happy for me and just happy that I can come through and help the team. Now, momentum wise and motivation wise, what do you think that this does for the Wildcats moving into tomorrow's game with Norfolk State? I think it gives us a lot of confidence and something to build on. You know, we had a lot of good things happen today and a lot of things we could do better, but I felt like it gave the team a lot of confidence. Now, what are a couple things that you think the Wildcats could do better to make the uh, chance of winning against Norfolk a little bit easier? Um, you know, we hit a lot of fly balls, just keeping the ball out of the air, putting more pressure on the defense, and just coming up with big hits when it's needed.